Welcome everybody and thanks for joining us today. It's been such a great series working our way through the super practical book of James. And I wanted to start uh, right in with uh, just a reminder of what this book and what this series is all about, right? We've been learning that biblical faith is in action more than just a feeling or a set of beliefs or statements that faith is something that I do. It's something that I work into my life that changes me in the way that I live. And sure, yes, it starts with belief. There is trust in faith. But James reminds us over and over and over again that faith should be moving us forward towards action that changes us and that changes other people in our lives. And as we've been working our way through the book of James, today we're going to be looking at just two short verses in chapter 4. There's so much in it. Uh, I'll just wrap the whole message around it. So James 4, 11 and 12 says, uh, Dear friends, as a part of God's family, never speak against another family member. For when you slander a brother or a sister, you violate God's law of love. And your duty is not to make yourself a judge of the law of love by saying that it doesn't apply to you, but your duty is to obey it. There's only one true lawgiver and judge, the one who has the power to save and destroy. So who do you think you are to judge your neighbor? When we judge others, we're actually putting ourselves into the place of God. And it's actually a form of idolatry. We talked about this uh, before around the subject of racism. Now, we all know racism is a sin because what you're doing is you're placing value on someone and you or I don't hold that right. Only God does. God says that every person is made in his image. Every single person is loved by him. So when we judge others, we're actually putting ourselves into God's seat, reserved just for him. That's what this verse ultimately is saying. And that's uh, ultimately the fact that it's not our place to cast judgment. But there's so much, I think, confusion around this idea of judging we're making a judgment call in our culture today uh, and in the church. There's tons of people who take this verse and they wrap it and twist it and they use it wrongly as a weapon against others or to defend themselves. They say, only God can judge me or who are you to judge me? Uh, like, you can't judge me. Jesus says, don't judge. Um, and I don't know necessarily that there's probably a statement that can be taken out of context or confused for its purpose uh, the way that this one is. So I want to give us three ideas inside this passage uh, about the ways that we can quit playing God and use judging correctly. So the first one is this, right? That we must make judgment. Uh, this passage is not saying that we don't make judgments. We, I think Christians have had a hard time with this one because we think uh, that we're making judgments. We're being judgmental. And an easy way to understand the difference in this is between the idea of, let's say, assessing versus judging or evaluating versus judging. Matthew 7, 15 through 20 says, Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. This is what assessing looks like. It's evaluating and it's something that we're all supposed to be able to do. It's okay to make a judgment call. In fact, I think that Jesus is saying in this passage that we should. Let's say really simply uh, that I'm allergic to apples and I walk up and I see two different trees. One is an apple tree, one is an orange tree. And when I'm looking, I'm seeing with, with my eyes, I'm making a judgment call on whether or not I should eat from one of these trees or another. I'm, I'm getting close, I'm assessing one. And my decision is, I know I'm allergic to it. I know it's not good for me, so I'm gonna stay away from that tree, right? It's the same, uh, I think, concept, the same principle can be applied in relationships that we have with people. When I see people's lives, when I see their values, their life choices, I can and I believe that I should assess those, I should evaluate those, and I think I need to make a judgment call about those, right? Do I want that in my life? Do I want that near me? And I think I can do that without being judgmental. So, just to be clear, everybody makes judgments. And I think that we have to, we must. You can't live without choosing between good or evil, right or wrong, truth, um, or things that are false, right? We have to make judgments every day. Here's an example. I'll give you two. 
How many of you today made the good judgment of uh, getting up, taking a shower, and brushing your teeth today, right? If you said yes, that's a good judgment. If you drove a car today, right, when you came to a stop sign or a stoplight, did you stop? Did you follow the directions? That also is good judgment. Uh, when scripture says don't judge, what it doesn't mean is that we should abandon all of our critical thinking skills or have some universal acceptance of any behavior or even refuse to discern between uh, what's right and what's wrong. God makes, I think, moral judgments and he expects us to do also. According to his scripture, he actually declares that some things are wrong, some things will hurt us and other things are right, other things are good for us. And you and I are expected to do the same thing, to choose what's right. This is uh, one kind of judging that I think we're supposed to do. And while God wants us all to make good judgments, good decisions about what's right and what's wrong, Scripture is super clear that number two, if you're following along via the app, we must not be judgmental in making those decisions. When I'm being judgmental, uh, ask yourself this question, am I really judging another person? Am I assigning them value uh, or am I punishing them for what I think of them? Either of these ideas put me in the place of God and it's not my job to be God or to act as God or to judge as God would judge. I think most of us don't think we are judgmental by nature. That's other people's problems. You probably know two or three people that really need to hear this sermon or really need to read this verse, but you're not one of them, right? I think that this is where we can find ourselves uh, running into problems. So let me help us see what it looks like to be judgmental, right? Here's a few statements for you. We're judgmental when we think uh, the worst of others, not the best. Uh, we're judgmental when we only speak to other people concerning their faults. We could be judgmental when we judge an entire life only by maybe the worst moments uh, that it's made of. We could be judgmental uh, when we judge others without considering ourselves in their same circumstance, right? What would it look like in my shoes uh, if I was in their place? Um, by those definitions or those concepts, I think we could all confess that we cross that line at times. Uh, but let's look at Jesus' uh, I think most famous teaching on this particular topic in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 1 and 2. He says this, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Again, Jesus was not commanding here a universal acceptance law of any lifestyle or teaching. I think what he's saying is that we are called to show unconditional love, not necessarily unconditional approval or acceptance. I can totally disagree and still love with all my heart. Jesus did uh, with tons of people and examples in scripture. And I think that you and I can do this also. Uh, in these verses, Jesus is actually giving us a set of principles on how to judge correctly. And the first one is judge in a way that you would want in return, right? There's this boomerang effect to judging others. The way that you give it is the way that you'll get it, says Jesus. So give it kindly and give it graciously. Over and over and over again, uh, in scripture, we're given these instructions to make judgments without being judgmental people. Look at a few of these passages and pay attention to the how um, it's being described. Matthew 18, 15 says, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. Galatians 6, 1 says, If someone is trapped in sin, you should gently lead that person back to the right path. Both of these verses demand that we make judgments and then do something about it, but that we do so gently and in love for the purpose of restoration for that person. Now, isn't that how you would want somebody to treat you? I know it's the way I would want somebody to treat me, to come to me in love and in mercy with grace and with truth. This is the point that Jesus is making in his illustration as we keep reading in Matthew 7, 3 through 5. 
He says, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't even see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye and then you'll see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. It's interesting that uh, Jesus didn't say here, don't point out the speck. It just says, make sure that you take care of yours first. And that's another principle for how to judge correctly. I think that we can draw out of scripture that we need to deal with our own stuff first. And isn't it typical within human nature to be so unrealistic about ourselves or hold ourselves to a different standard and to notice what's wrong with everybody else, especially those that you're not friends with or enemies with, while missing the total obvious issues that we hold in ourselves, right? Have you ever noticed um, that we have like two ways of describing every vice, right? There's a bad one uh, for people who do it a way that you don't like it. And then there's like a good way of describing something for when you do it yourself, right? Other people are compulsive neat freaks and you're just a very tidy person, right? Others are argumentative, but you love to discuss the issues. Other people are negative, but you're realistic in the way you approach life, right? Other people, they gossip and they talk bad, but you like to share prayer requests with people who pray. Other people sin, um, but you just make mistakes, right? This is that double standard. And I think that we're all guilty um, if we think long enough about it, right? That we have this 2020 vision when it comes to the fault of others, but we can be practically blind to our own faults. And Jesus cautions us against this. He says, don't be a hypocrite. Don't say that, uh, he's not saying that you need to be perfect in order to make uh, loving calls in other people's lives. Uh, but he says to make sure to deal with your own stuff before you start trying to deal with someone else's stuff. And that brings us to our third idea today. Uh, number three, if you're filling it out in the app or taking notes, it's to show others mercy. There's something so much better that we can offer to others than judgment, and it's mercy. Mercy is actually the opposite of judgment. Judgment is giving someone what they deserve, and mercy is the opposite. It's keeping someone from getting what it is that they deserve. Mercy is love in action. It's actually far more than just a feeling. It's something that you have to do to show it. It's something that you have to display to give to somebody else. And I think this is actually so hard to do to show mercy specifically for me. If you, you know, offend my family or if there's something that you do that wrongs a friend of mine, I want justice. And oftentimes if it's, you know, a knee jerk reaction, it's usually not good justice. I want to take vengeance into my own hand. Um, I don't want to respond with mercy. I want to respond with something that's going to make you feel the same pain that you inflicted on somebody else. But God doesn't do that to us. This is what God has done for actually all of us in Christ. Even in our sin and selfishness, God didn't judge us. We deserve judgment, but actually he offers us mercy through Christ. Look at Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. It says, but God is so rich in mercy. He loved us so much, verse 5, that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sin, that he gave us back our lives again when he raised Christ from the dead. Only by his undeserved favor have we been saved, right? It's huge. Aren't you glad that we don't get what we deserve when it comes to our own sin, that God doesn't give us what we deserve, instead he gives mercy? I think that's what we're supposed to give to others, especially when we don't want to. I want to take us actually back uh, to the book of James, this time in chapter 2, verse 13. And I want to end with this verse today. It's a very important, I think, single phrase. It says this, uh, you must show mercy to others or God will not show mercy to you when he judges you. But the person who shows mercy can stand without fear at judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. That's the part that I want to land on. Mercy wins. Mercy triumphs. It is victorious. This is the good news of our gospel. And because mercy is what we receive from God, I think mercy is what we are to give to others. 
Now, our world right now, our culture could definitely use more mercy givers right now. In a moment, uh, with so much stress and so much division amongst people, like people are ready to yell and fight over the smallest inconveniences or disagreements. You could be in Walmart and people are breaking out in fistfights. I think that we need more mercy and more mercy givers in this moment. There's been, I think, so much talk that we have been involved in uh, over the past few months of so many people waiting for the community to come back to church. And I understand that. I, I want it. I miss it. It's been so long since we've seen the body of Christ gathered together. But we haven't just been sitting around waiting for the community to come back to the church. We've been taking the church and all that it stands for, all that it believes to the community. Between weekly food distributions, uh, dozens of blood drives that we've done and that we will continue to do, uh, loving first responders and um, healthcare workers. We're still supporting families in Uganda and connecting with families in Tijuana. Jesus' people through our church are being mercy givers. I think to know God is to know his mercy and to be like God is to show mercy to others. So here's some practical steps for us, right? What does it look like to show mercy this week? Here's some examples, maybe something you can talk about in your neighborhood church or with your families. Mercy believes the best, not the worst, right? Mercy offers forgiveness. It doesn't hold on to an offense. Mercy would listen to others and it works to understand other people's perspectives. Mercy starts and ends a conversation with love. Mercy also will lead you to cross economic and ethnic and cultural, political, religious barriers to help people in need. Are you practicing mercy? Now, here's two questions that uh, I want to wrap this whole conversation up with. And the first one is this. Have you said yes to God's mercy in your own life? Right? Have you decided to receive Jesus? If not, you can receive his mercy today simply. But before I tell you how, number two, this question. Will you show mercy to others this week? Let's let Mercy be our default position, right? In our homes, with our families, with our coworkers, what we say on social media and all of our conversations. Let's work diligently to respond with mercy instead of judgment. Now, if you want Jesus' mercy in your life, there's such a simple way you can do it. The Bible says that when we confess our sins, that he is faithful, he is just to forgive us our sins. That uh, we just simply invite him in, that we surrender our lives and that he uh, will not just come and be with us, but he'll save us from our own sin. If that's you today and you want to pray that prayer, I'd love to lead you in it. Uh, you can pray with me simply now, Jesus. I pray that you would enter into my life. Lord, that by way of what your scripture says, Lord, I don't want to be a judgmental person. Lord, I want to judge accordingly. I want to make great judgment calls, great decisions in my life. And I haven't been doing that super well, Lord. I want to surrender my life. I want you to show me mercy, Lord. Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you show me what it looks like to live according to your life mapped out in Scripture? I love you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer right now, uh, you can do something really simple. You can text New Start to 67076, and somebody from our team will actually help you with a few resources so you can begin to walk this journey with Jesus um, in a way where you're not alone, you're connected to our church family. You can get information on uh, ways that you can continue to walk faithfully with Jesus. I love you guys so much. Thanks for listening. Let's worship with one more song, and I'll see you on the next stream.